Why are you? I'm. Um, why were you wearing a mask? Um, because I was in the. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Because I run a health clinic. It's... Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Have to health it up. Make sure I don't get COVID before my weekend plans. Good also. weekend plans, I'm guessing. Um. Well, we'll see. Depending on the weather. Well, I want it to rain, but I'm going to assume you don't. I do not want it to rain this weekend, please. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop asking for the universe, all right? How about it can rain Saturday but not Sunday? Yeah, all right. Did you get my email last night? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. So we're on the same page. That's cool. Um, oh, what a couple of weeks. I tell you what, you look brain dead. Just like, I'm ready for a nap almost. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, real life happens. I'm really tired and yeah. that's okay. But Absolutely. I I have self-identified caffeine. I'm hearing you. What, what kind do you drink? Huh? What do you drink? Coffee. There's a billion different types, yeah, is what oh, I was asking. Oh, I'm a skinny latte. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, by the way, I tried to print out those worksheets just before, and they're like some really strange format. So can you just send me the actual PDF of the book, and then I'll go through and see what I need printed out? Or try to – it's – I can't format it. It's very confusing. It's it looks strange. It's like this small on this pe piece of paper, and I can't print it out oh. like that. Yeah, it's real weird. Okay. Yes. Um. Cool. So <clears throat> I've had some very interesting things happen. Some like big, profound epiphanies, for lack of a better word. Yeah. Um. I don't it makes even me anxious already. But you're tired, so I'm not anxious if that helps. I'm not that tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm smiling and I'm happy and I'm in a great mood, yeah? So I promise it's all going to go well. So there's been some big shit that's happened, but as I've always said since I've known you, like after the darkness comes a lot, right? So um, I guess I'll just go through it as best as I can. I've pretty much worked through a lot of it. Um, yeah. but to keep you up to date, I guess, and to see if there's yeah. any therapy stuff I need to, to do. So yes. I don't yeah. remember if I'd mentioned that you, my sister-in-law were talking like briefly, um, the last time we spoke. So she'd left some clothes at my sister's and her brother's place for me. My sister-in-law has the same name as our brother, funnily enough. So when they said it was um, Taylor that had dropped it off, I originally thought my brother wasn't, it was her. Anyway, the long and short of it is, obviously we've known each other for a very long time, given our siblings have been together for like eight years or so, right? Yeah. Um, we've had a off and on relationship because of well, we're very, very similar, me and my sister-in-law, right? And we actually have so many of the same thoughts and beliefs and patterns and stuff. It's it's frustrating more than anything where we're at. But um, our siblings are super weird about us being friends. They always have been, yeah? I don't know why. She doesn't know why, but they are. Um, and we would started texting, you know, found out we've got a lot of the same beliefs, thoughts, stuff and shit, you know, with COVID, vaccines, blah, blah, blah. We hit it off like a house of fire. Now, I haven't spoken to her since I ended the friendship the first time because I couldn't have her in my life because I was at that point in philosophy where I was like, if I know you lie to anyone about anything, you can't be in my life, right? And I just cut every single person out that lied. The black and white thinking. Yeah, the black and white thinking. Good old BPD, right? But... In all fairness, I, I, that's a whole nother thing. I was like researching BPD and shit last night. But anyway, um, I got to the point where I was like, okay, I'll be a little bit more lenient on the whole line thing. I have since yeah. done a, a whole nother one night 80, by the way. I'm back to where I started because seriously, if you fucking lie to other people, I'm never going to know if you're lying to me. And frankly, just don't fucking tell me if you're a liar is my theory. <laughs> but anyway... That's not the big point of the... Oh, actually, it is. So, let me think. Um, we were talking. Obviously, you know I make my videos. Um, it's like the one thing keeping me grounded. And I'm... Um, we decided to hang out. Now, as I said, it's been years since we've actually hung out. So, we had so much stuff to, like, talk about and catch up on. And, like, anybody would... That hasn't seen someone in a long time, yeah? yeah. We had the best day like I drove up there honestly I'd packed for like a week it looked like but it was a night and we just had this amazing time like she's got a partner that lives with her um 
he went out for the day. Me and her, we had a couple of drinks. Um, she's quit weed, um, which is, and you know me with my stories, they'll all sort of get to the point of the end eventually. Um, but yeah, so she was a weed smoker when we first hung out. She was one that really introduced me to bongs, for example, because I didn't smoke them before her. Now it's been almost a year since she smoked weed. So that's cool. Um, anyway, let me think. Brain, fuck. Um, we're having a great time. Went out, had dinner, watched Married at First Sight. Um, all good things. <laughs> it was so much fun watching it with her too, because it was like... I get into it and she was in the room. So it was lovely. Anyway, the point is we had a fucking fantastic time. Fantastic. And I was so happy that we were back in each other's life, yeah? But I had said to her, I'm past the point of bullshit with our family. Like, if they find out that I've been here, which I obviously am not going to tell them because we're not talking, I said, just tell them what I've said. I said, for whatever happens, I was like, don't lie. Now, it's so fucking simple, yeah? So, <clears throat> um, everything's good, we're fine, blah, blah, blah. The next thing we know, fucking, I'm getting sent a screenshot from her with a message from the brother saying, what's Olivia doing filming videos in your house? And it was like, well, fuck, okay. Didn't know you had even watched them. Um, that shocked the shit out of me to begin with. But yeah. I just said to her, I was like, that's got absolutely nothing to do with them. I'm a 36-year-old woman and you're a 30-year-old woman. We're growing ups as much as I don't always feel like one. We are. And we're allowed to have a relationship, right? And I had told her, whatever happens, I will stand by you, provided you do the right thing. Now, there was already shit going on in the sense that she's very aware of a situation that is breaking my heart because somebody needs to call child services on a family desperately, right? And obviously, I would immediately call someone if I needed to, if I could, if I had the names of these people that she's told me about, I would have made the phone call well and truly by now. So that was already killing me because I kept saying to her, you're in this relation, you're in this situation because you need to step up, yeah? You need to yeah. do something right for these kids because you're the well, we only person that can, huh? Legally, there's an obligation. There is legally, and that's what I said to her. I was like, you literally have to. I was like, I'm training to be a psychologist. I can't have this knowledge. It is killing me that there are children out there in a situation that she's explained to me that just makes me want to cry and rage and everything at once, and she won't do anything about it because she's worried about upsetting her partner's smoking buddy. And I'm like, those children's lives are worth a thousand times more than your partner's weed buddy. Yeah, like it, it, it's it's so fucked in my head. It was already like, okay, universe is testing me. Can I still be in this person's life as much as we're having a great time? The simple fact that she won't even give me the contact details to let me do it. I said to she's like, illusion. She can do it anonymously. That's what I said. I said you can do it any which fucking possible way there is, and I will help you. Yeah. I said that doesn't affect anything in your life, and she's like, but this, that, and every excuse. But I was like. Don't care. I don't care. There are children in desperate need of help, like desperate yeah. need, right? So that was hard enough. So then the sibling sends the fucking message about me being there. And because apparently the sibling watches your videos, which you were unaware of. No, I didn't know that they watched them. If they watch them, hi, that's fine. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm filming this right now. Like, hi. Um, like, <laughs> this is my purpose in life, mate. This is going on the internet, darling. I have watched the other one I filmed from last one so many times. I can't even tell you. It's like with everything. All I think about is, damn, I really should have just started this when I wanted to. Like, I will literally film every single fucking therapy session ever, except for group, moving forward. I had a specialist appointment yesterday, and all I kept thinking was, damn, I wish I was recording this. Like, I literally just want cameras in my entire house so I can just live stream to the internet 24-7. That would be my ultimate dream. Um... What can I say? I'm a little bit weird. I'm There's all good with it. with that with regular life and, and therapy, but we can talk about that later. Yeah, this is just a, another thing. The point is I want to get, yeah, so like... Um, anyway, you were there yeah. in this situation, having conversation about CPS and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so everything's done. Um, 
the, the following day the message comes through she messages me and she's like oh fuck it's already started and I'm just like tell them to bugger off we're growing ups they don't need to know what we talked about and if they do just tell them the truth because the one thing I said over and over and over and over again in her presence was do not lie about me I am not ashamed or like what I've said to her I'm saying it to my camera do you know what I mean? It's, it's not a secret. So what happened next is what fucked up shit, right? So she videos me. This is like the following day. And she's, she's like, oh my God, because we'd organized to catch up. And originally we were catching up on Saturday, just being, yeah? And then I was fucking exhausted, finishing my antibiotics, whatever it was. Which, by the way, I'm better now. Simple thing of antibiotics. Fixed all that crap. Um, anyway, we decided to make it for the Sunday so that we could watch the Married at First Sight ceremony together and have dinner and whatnot, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's Saturday night and she video calls me and she's freaking out about what her brother's going to do and my sister's going to do and what they're going to do and how she's going to ask and, and then, how did it go? I'm on the video to her and she goes to me, oh, I just, I just told them that when you talk about them, I smile and nod. I smile, she used the word meekly, like, I'm very, just smile and nod along. And I'm like, I'm looking at her and I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, wait, I'm so confused. You know when you're just so confused, you literally have to stop and be like, wait, say that again? And she goes, yeah, I just told them that I smile and nodded. And I'm like, wait, so you've told our siblings who already have this shitty fucking, like, perception of me that I basically talked at you like ranting where not just no no not yet smack about them yeah but. yeah so she made it out that i had talked all this bullshit about my family to her which she had not said one word about she just smiled and nodded away and that she just likes her words where i want to keep the peace so i don't want to be involved and i looked at her and i was like are you actually telling me that you believe that's what happened and she goes that is what happened i said i was with you for over 24 hours that's not what happened we had a conversation like we had so many conversations she fully agrees with what i have been talking about and in all honesty the shit that my family's done to me it's a way fucking worse than what they, like they're doing to her i feel more bad for her i'm in a good place i just can no contact and i'm fine Whereas she's lied directly to our siblings about me. Now, we all know how I feel about lying. So you can imagine what fucking happened after that. Wow. I hung up on her immediately, obviously. <clears throat> I picked up my phone, I think, and made a video just to get it out because I was raging. Yeah, so um, you dysregulated. I'm not denying that I dysregulated my... Sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware. Like, I've had a week to go over it. Mm -hmm. I not only dysregulated, I fully went, fuck the lot of yours, and wrote a message to my family on my website saying, you're all fucking disgusting. I've had enough. Back off the lot of yours. Now, yesterday I wrote another one saying, look, that was me. That was my ego. I'm a bitch. I know I should... Like... Part of me is like I should delete it, and then the other part of me wrote another blog going, well, that's still real life. You can delete shit on internet, but you can't delete real life. So I'm keeping it as is. And I've apologised. I don't think you're disgusting. But I think they're very, um, it's like, they should have fucking stayed out of it. It's that simple. And since they didn't, she should have told the truth. Again, simple. So obviously my answer is I just don't have any of them in my life. I said to her, look, it's not worth it to me. It's just not fucking worth it. Like, it's like being in fucking primary school. And I don't have any interest with that crap. So, um, that's the family stuff. Oh, and I happened to mention my father in something without even thinking because I've been so, like, in a video, I was talking, because this whole child abuse not fucking doing the stepping up thing has obviously triggered a lot of shit for me, because I spent my childhood praying someone would call fucking child services, you know? So you said something about your dad when you were talking to her? I said something about my dad a on video. a video. Okay. And then I watched the video back, and I was like, well, that's an interesting thing I've mentioned, because that's not something I ever would have talked out about on a pr public video because I need lots of intense therapy around that situation. But my point of the story was, I mentioned him, and within hours, I've been, I received an email from him. So, you know, fucking hell. It was like seconds with mum, hours with her. Go figure, right? But, anyway. 
I'm in a good place because all of this, <laughs> I love your expression, but I am in a good place. I look at the clock and go, I've got 50 minutes to get everything out. This happened in two fucking weeks, all right? Obviously, I'm aware I talk fast during these things. <laughs> Thankfully, you, you know me. It's like I don't understand people that have to just build up. I've got so much shit I need to work through with therapy. I've got to do it. But okay, so this is where I think so much has happened, all right? So regardless of the fact that me and her were in each other's life again for a very small amount of time, yes. so much I think good has happened in the sense that, now I'm going to make the story make sense. So, okay, I have cut since the last time I spoke to you, but, but I feel like, oh, I'm, I'm 99.999% certain it'll never happen again because... As with always, I get to this point. So the last time, I, last time I cut myself, I cut myself in such a fucking dumb place, or good place depending on how you look at it, it hurt so fucking bad and it was so irritating and so annoying, so itchy and so everything. It's like all at once is like I'm never, ever, ever doing that again. That is just like, do you know what I mean? I'm at that point where I'm like. work for the reason why historically you've cut for very specific reasons yeah, yeah. and you've not worked. The coping strategy is not come the way into fruition the way we want to get to. Yeah, because I'm going through these changes and I'm trying to get out of the darkness. And obviously, yeah. cutting is a dark thing. It's not not someone who loves himself doesn't go slicing, you know. But I think it needed to happen the way it did to get me to this point. And again, there's so many things that have happened. So this all took place on Saturday. Yes. On Monday, right? <clears throat> My lovely neighbor, right? He's growing on me, right? I do, I like him, I think. Um, uh, <laughs> but, again, so we're talking, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I'm watching Killing Eve. I've decided to just binge it until I'm done with it, right? Um, and I hear this knocking on the door, and it was Monday, um, and it was around nearly seven, because I had my phone set for Married at First Sight, right? And I'd been texting. <laughs> Well, yes, that's, I say that, but I'm, as soon as I finish Killing Eve, like literally as soon as I finish Killing Eve, I am taking the power cord out of the TV and taking it across the street to the neighbor. So I'm done. Like, that's it. I am literally binging Killing Eve to get rid of the TV because one, again, married at first sight, not helping me, making my brain dumb. I'm sure of it. Like, it's fucking trash. Um, and just in general, there's so many things happening that I think are great, which is why, even though these stories sound bad, I feel really good. Okay. Um, but the point, all right, hold on. Neighbor knocks on the door, and then. Yes. So he, he, you know when someone knocks on your door, you're not expecting it, and you think, oh, I've got a bit of stuff to do. Like, so I walked outside to talk to him to begin with, right? As in not inviting him back in. Now, earlier in the day, though, I had called out over the back fence because I was trying to get his attention because Sebastian has shed, and I've got like a two and a half meter snake skin, um, which if your kids might find interesting, let me know and I'll drop it off. <laughs> um, and I wanted to show it to him, you know? I asked no, my friend that too, and she's like, no, I don't want that in the house. No, it's next. Thanks, though. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking, and I said to him, look, you know, I've got such amount of time, but I'm going to be kicking you out by such and such. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. I was like, all right, come in. We'll have talk. So we're still talking, and again, I'm like, okay. I've, I've mentioned i got shit on, but he's still talking. He just wants to talk. And me, I can appreciate that because I'm a talker, Yeah. So I was like, let's have a seat. So we went to sit at the kitchen table. Yeah. <laughs> you know when guys have got their jeans on and they've got to take like their wallet and their phone and bullshit out of their pocket so they can like sit properly? We take, he, takes his, he takes his phone out and then he goes, oh, I, I better just take the pipe out so I don't break it when I sit. <laughs> and again, it's like brain registers, but then it, it's almost like it doesn't at the same time. And I'm just like... I did hear that. And then the next thing I know, I'm at my kitchen table. He's sitting at the kitchen table and there's a full packed ice pipe sitting on my kitchen table right fucking smack in front of me. And I'm just like, cool. And I was like, so you meant it, pipe pipe. And like, I know this is so weird because I made a video after he left. And in that, it's like I forgot until the next day what happened. So I couldn't remember if I touched it because I was super curious, you know, my curious brain. So he put the pipe in front of me, and he'd obviously had some. Like, it was very evident he was high when he got here. And the pipe was obviously melted, given the crystals would go everywhere otherwise. But he had sticky tape over the pipe, 
And I was like, oh, I've never seen it before. So I asked if I could look at it and I did. I picked up the pile and I looked at it and I sort of gave it a look, curiosity. It's been over five years since I've been in the same room as one. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, cool. I said, you do know you cannot light that in my house, right? Uh, he goes, yeah. I said, preferably don't bring it back either. Like, I don't really want it in my house, but okay, yeah, we'll leave it on the table so it doesn't break any pocket. That's fun. So it's just sitting there and he's looking at me and I'm like, fuck, it's really good, isn't it, that I really have no interest in this. And he goes, seriously, you can be this close to it, you're not interested. I said, it's a fucking good thing I can, yeah? Like, yes. Because he's literally trying to trap you. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because I wrote a post about it the following day and then I was like, was he doing that intentionally? And in all honesty, I actually don't think so. I don't. I um, know that sounds I, like I hear where you're coming from, but you didn't smoke ice like I did. Chip, chip, chip away yeah, at the result. Yeah. It's a test. Mm, okay, that's. I've obviously questioned all of that. Hear me yeah. out, okay? The first few times, yeah, I fully agree. I agree with you on that one. And I even questioned on this one, and maybe on some part, absolutely. But I've done my thinking, and honestly, as fucking shocking as it sounds, right, but it's the truth, because that's what i got to talk about, I was one of those ice smokers that took it with me everywhere. I did. Like, it wouldn't have entered my head, like, if I knew someone that had smoked ice, to be like, oh, do my, and I, I know I would have done that. Would it have made a difference if this person had very specifically said, please don't do that? On the ice, when you're actually in that mind frame? No, I don't think it would have. No, I, I don't. I think, unfortunately, I mean, I would really like to say it would have, but no, unfortunately, the ice pipe overrode everything. Everything else. Yeah. So when he pulled it out, he didn't offer it to me. That one I will make clear. It was just, it was there. Like, he definitely, yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. He didn't, didn't offer it to me. And he, and when I said to him, like I did, you know, about not, not um, wanting it anymore, he goes, oh, so you're basically cured. I said, when it comes to ice, I said, I'm 100% cured. I said, it's literally sitting on my table in front of me. And I'll be honest and say, the quality looked amazing. All right. People smoked the shit for a fucking reason. Now, I feel like that was this huge, I mean, I want to say test wasn't a hard test for me but i mean it still feels like one i mean it feels it's just a test that was not as challenging as you perhaps thought it would have been. well that's what i thought because like obviously i have said to you you know like i'm 100 percent get like i don't want to do it blah 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 um it'll be six years in july but you're also very careful about not putting yourself in those situations being mindful of that as well as yeah. is appropriate oh absolutely i'm not going out of my way to be put into that situation but now okay. i know it, you know that you can manage it yeah exactly like it's one right. like it was put in front of me and it's over five years and i don't like to admit this but it is true it looked fucking amazing from the point yes. of view of what ice looks like it looks right. good yeah. yeah um and so the fact that i said no i was just like fuck yeah like i am winning at life and it was because all this happened it was like a combination of things that happened right it's gotten me to the point where I'm like, okay, hold on a minute. Why did I quit ice in the first place? So then it's like all these memories have come flying back. Unfortunately, as much as my ego hates it, I cannot say my fucking memory doesn't work because it works perfectly fine if I use it properly. Um, so I obviously, like, I had the ice pipe in front of me and then it was like it hit me. Why am I on this journey? Why am I not just smoking that anymore, right? And then I was like, I didn't quit fucking ice to sit at home and get stoned and watch Netflix. And I know I'm at uni, but I don't feel like I've been doing it in the frame of mind that it needs to be almost. Like I've made it, um, how do I make this make sense? Those last four units, as you know, mean so fucking much to me. Now, I believe... Obviously, like, I want to stay at the uni I'm at, you know that, I know that, that's what I'm aiming for. I do believe I'll get the grades, worst case scenario, to apply for a different university, heaven forbid, shit goes south. But there's always an op always a way, right? Yeah. But the whole being with my sister-in-law and she's not smoking and then and her partner smokes all day, every day, so she's stopped, and that's awesome. Obviously, I know with everything else, I can just stop shit. I'm at, like, I don't even know how many, I'm at 
over a month of no smoking cigarettes so that's awesome um i smoked a bong at hers so i ended up bringing my bong out when the whole shit happened with the texting and the bullshit right and i had a few and i was just like oh i'm done so through all of this stuff it's hit me like smack in the face um fuck i didn't quit eyes to fucking fuck around, so to speak. I would, I mean, I would have, if I, how do I ugh, try to think? I have decided that to do what I set out to do, which was why I quit the eyes to begin with, I need to quit smoking weed, quit vaping weed, quit watching TV, quit all subscriptions, everything is going. And I keep thinking about our last session and you were like radical acceptance. And I was like, yeah, that's one of my new favorite terms I've decided. Yes. Now, I'm when I say- I'm that term today, wait. Okay. Okay. Um, radical acceptance is great. I absolutely agree with a lot of what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And let's set realistic goals. Quitting everything, including your Netflix subscription all at the same time it is luck. Okay, let me re reframe that then, okay? So once I'm finished with Killing Eve, I am getting rid of them, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's, that has to happen. Because if you go back to a year ago at this time, this that like last year, I was saying the exactly the same thing. The TV cords had to go. I remember going through, I've got a video in Bunnings going, I'm trying to find like a timer thing to put the vape or put the stuff in. I've now realized I am one of those people who just has to stop. So when I say I'm quitting everything, Married at First Sight is going to be playing for a long time. Now, I originally wasn't going to get rid of the TV cord until I'd finished watching that, but then I remember watching it when I'd been in trimester one. Now, I am not enrolled until July, but it's now the 24th of February, and I feel like I am so fucking behind. It's not funny, and I haven't technically even started. So there's my issues with my schoolwork, right? But what I figured is I vape for the reasons I'm supposed to, but I'm also able to over vape very easily. And then once I get to that point, I'm like, oh, I love what I study, but I love what I dream about more and study just sort of goes out the fucking window. And I can't focus. And like, honestly, like I think I've said to you before, the only way I'm gonna actually implement this shit into my brain is repetition. Yes. Now I have more energy at night time. Yes. Unfortunately, I smoke weed at night time to try yes. to make myself go to sleep. So I think we talked about it last time where I'm constantly trying with the schedule. Anyway, I've come to the conclusion that, and I've already emailed the specialists, cannabis, all of her. Like I've got, I'm getting in the process. I've decided that vaping weed, I'd like to stop. Okay. Um, and, and yesterday I found out from my new urologist specialist, who's awesome, she's pink here, um, that 90% of my medication is um, affecting my bladder very badly. <laughs> she's like, almost all of the meds are on for everything else is causing all the issues with this. And I was like, okay. So she's like, we basically need to start again. We're going to have a washout period. Mm -hmm. Mm, she's like, I'm going to have to talk to all the rescue specialists of what you're doing this and that. She's like, but we need to basically drop a bunch and then she's like because she goes yes these are helping you for such and such a such but they're obvious like it's i need surgery <laughs> it's, other issues. yeah it's always the way but um i just feel like if i have if i use just like the oils for example like the cbd oils and she said it too she goes you're much better off to be on a stronger cbd oil or a thc oil than to be continuing to take all of these she goes and long term she's like you know you, you take medication because you need it and she goes you know when you're born with a chemical imbalance in your brain like i was she goes unfortunately for people like you your life is just going to be harder it's going to be harder and she's like it's going to be harder in so many different aspects and she's like and yeah so basically it's like a we've got to get the the meds right and what i think it's gonna be really nice uh, feels like a really nice interaction for you because you have had so many negative interactions with medical, particularly medical professionals. It's awesome. With, in, with a series of invalidation of your yeah. experiences. You know, you've had a lot of people mis misdiagnosing, a lot of people misunderstanding, a lot of people just blatantly not getting it. Oh, I know. Um, God. Like you're, it feels like in this appointment, you felt, she, you felt hurt, you felt validated, you felt that there was a clear treatment plan 100% 100% I've got an I've got an appointment booked for the 9th of March with her again yeah yeah with her yeah. so she said to me 
ideally I need surgery. Now I've had the surgery before. She needs to go in and actually view the whole bladder, right? Yeah. Um, she, I had private health insurance at the time. So I realized that after I got back, I didn't ask all the questions I probably should have, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, so she said, like she said public it'll, it's just too long too big of a wait it's not even worth it I said to her look I'm at the point where yes I'm on the disability yes I'm paying to go to uni but um, when it comes to this I'd rather just figure out a way to pay for it than have to wait because my health is the most important thing to me because I need to be as healthy as I possibly can be to achieve everything else right? and the wait lists are extremely long and it's about how long you can tolerate the ongoing discomfort and problems that you've been having not long i can't it's killing me i said to her this new this new symptom i've got is so fucked up it's like i can be sitting here having a conversation with you for example everything feels normal like i don't need to go i'll stand up and then it's like my bladder my bladder does a backflip and it's like i've got two seconds left to get to a bathroom or i honestly feel like i'm going everywhere and i'm i'm 36 like that would be horrific (laughs) so yeah um the I need to do whatever it is. So she said... She's saying, let's talk about it on the 9th and we're going to do... No, so they're doing an actual procedure on the 9th. So she says... Oh, sorry. So it's costing 280. She said there's this like in-between thing. She goes, so I... She goes, I can... I can do a procedure using anesthetic and a scope. This is where I should have asked more questions. Um, (laughs) Yeah. um, Informed consent and all that, yeah. (laughs) I went with it because they were all just so nice. And I was just like, yeah, it wasn't until I got home. I was like, I don't even know what it's called. I can't look it up or anything. But she basically said I needed a scope. um, And I thought I had to get one. And then the lady was like, no, no, we take care of it all. You come on the 9th, it's $280. But they're going to, like, make me numb and then put a scope into me while I'm awake far as I know I don't know clearly like I said didn't ask enough questions well I mean but um it sounds kind of intimidating it does right I'm I'm just like yeah let's do it come on and she's like oh we're just gonna do this and that we're gonna have a look at your bladder wall and I'm just like yeah yeah yeah, I'm assuming that it's something that she's done before oh yeah yeah it's definitely something she's done before (laughs) yeah it's It's definitely yeah but like if I knew the name I was actually going to call them. I thought I should probably call them up and ask them what it's actually called because I honestly don't know. But sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> if they can help me, that's all that really exactly. matters, you know. But so that's the main thing. Sometimes this is the thing. Sometimes when you do have really in-depth discussions with your doctors, whilst yeah, totally do that. But yeah, sometimes informed consent doesn't necessarily help. You know, you've got to trust that you're dealing I... with the right specialist and the right professional for you. That's what I see too. They can do it. You know, I don't need to see all the instruments and what everything does. I just need you to do it and trust that you're the right person to do it. That's, I think, why I didn't because I said to her, I was just like, even, you know, when you're in a presence, like I knew when I met you, for example, like you just know. And it's like, as soon as I met this woman, I was just like, hell's yeah. And I said to her, I said, I am just going to put my faith into you because. It's been 11 years since I was diagnosed. Like, and she's a, she's a urologist, and she you're not. And so we'll go with that. And she's a urologist you trust. Well, the, and you feel is hearing you and understanding you. Absolutely. And, and the interesting thing is, because obviously I've got all my medical paperwork, as you know, I took all the paperwork I've got from all the other urology appointments from years ago, because I hadn't been able to figure out who, like, the, the specialist I'd seen didn't seem to exist anymore and I spoke to her she goes oh she goes he's retired I said so you do know who he is she goes yeah I worked with him he was amazing I was like so it all sort of like pulled together so like nice the, little kismet there yeah exactly so I'm feeling really good and I think I'm just at the point now where like I made a video about it and I was like I want to get to a point in my life, right, where say it's 8 o'clock and energy hits me and I'm like, let's pick up my textbook and read. Whereas at the moment, if it's 8 o'clock, I'm just like, "Mm, let's smoke some weed, watch some TV. You know what I mean? So when I say I'm getting rid of the subscriptions for TV and getting rid of the TV cord, my computer is obvious. I'm still on my laptop. My laptop turns into a tablet, which I constantly forget. Um, And because I'm getting rid of it before Say Married at First Sight finishes, in my mind, I'm thinking, well, you know, if I want to watch something, I can just you can. jump online and watch episodes of Married at First Sight, you know what I mean, on my computer. And it's, you know, same deal. It makes it, I suppose, more mindful than mindless. 
hundred you know, percent to make a choice yes. to do it. You watching married at first sight, for example, and you know, sacrifice a couple of brain cells to that. Fine. Go for your life. I haven't watched it. Don't, <laughs> don't watch it. That's all I have to say. I did once or twice in the past, like in past seasons, but this, I uh, can't do it with scheduling issues this time, but <laughs> lucky you, it's probably good. Know, right. But at the same time, you know, it gives you, this is what you're watching. This is what you're doing. You're making the active conscious decision to yeah. do it, which is fine, which is totally okay. Instead of having it on in the background and studying here and then gravitating your eyes from here to here. Yeah, and as someone who now knows I've got ADHD, life makes so much more sense, right? Yeah. And yeah. I almost swear... Eliminate like, distraction, yes. Well, Do that's... things act actfully, mindfully. Look, look what I bought. Oh, my God. I went shopping yesterday. What is it? I don't know what It's it one is. of these freaking Google Home things, right? I don't know what that is. So it's one of those things I can talk to, and I'll be like, hey, Google, I really want to change the name to Lucy, but according to what I've looked up, I can't do that. But um, it's one of those ones that you connect everything to, because right. me and technology, we're not friends. As you know, I'm making these videos. Um, my cloud storage confused the fucking shit out of me. So I went shopping, found out Officework does price matching. Didn't know that. Um, I bought this, which is like a, a cloud storage, but a home cloud. So not like yearly prescriptions. It's like eight terabytes. So this will literally be like the next five years worth of cloud storage for me and then that one which the man in the store said is going to take hours and lots of patience so i'm glad i haven't quit we just yet to um figure it out hey i've got my vape right in front of me because so far every time i've had a therapy session i've had none and then needed to go and have a bong while i'm talking to you so you know <laughs> thankfully i think I'm, i've got like half a bong that's left and i'll be like yeah i'll do that and i'm good i'm gonna figure out the storage shit but um, <clears throat> I'm feeling good. Like, I just, I feel like once, like you said, the distractions, I'm so easily distracted and so easily distracted by my own mind. I do need to remove everything else. And like, I, like, the man in the store was like, I don't understand why you're buying this. Like, just use it on your phone. I was like, it doesn't work on my phone. I said, like, I need someone to tell me what to do. Like, a teacher. He goes, but that means you need to be at home. I was like, dude, I'm always at home. So I need, like, Google to be like, hey, Olivia, start studying, psych you know, psychopathology. Start studying, you know. Like, if, if I'm in a school setting and I have hour slots, I work fucking really well. You do do very well with structure left to my own devices on the other hand less structure and speaking of structure there's something that's going on that's fucking with my head like you wouldn't believe and i don't know why but you're the therapist so hopefully you can help me oh my god yeah no pressure no pressure hey you know um langley so so dumb and embarrassing but not too embarrassing because i've already talked about it on my website but um I know quite a bit about your life it's okay <laughs> I'm I'm sharing it with everyone now, so it's not. I mean, it's when I say embarrassing, it's just it's dumb because I know how dumb it is and I don't know why I'm doing it. But what it is is I'm I'm taking too many days in between having a shower. As dumb as that sounds, it wasn't until my sister-in-law was really like, "That's a long fucking time," because I don't know, it was like four days or something, and I was like, mm, I don't know, I don't know, like I'm I like. I'm okay. I had a shower today and a shower yesterday. Um, not that you can fucking tell, because I'm sweating like a fucking pig, but that's all right. Also, I'm on video. Oh, who cares? So you don't have like visible dirt on your face. Oh, I've had a sh I've had a shower today, right <laughs> before this appointment. But my point is, <laughs> also, I would have no idea unless there's visible dirt on your face. You're not oh yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I guess the reason I'm talking about it is is like is back in the past when I was super depressed, I would count. Like, it was almost how I count how depressed I was for how many days I'd gone between. And then I watched that stupid show, The 100 with Andy Lee, and it was just a random question. And, and I was like, oh, well, it's really not a big deal. And now, because my brain likes to overthink everything, yeah, it's it now overthinking thinking. why it's I'm going a few more days without the shower and I'm trying to work out how disgusting I am as a person. Maybe you can help me with that. Well, one disgusting as a person two why are you not going without a shower is it structure is it routine is it just that you haven't noticed is no i'm a, i'm so aware of it i've written a post and made a video and i'm now talking to you about it but yeah, the only but reason not, i got until, until your sister-in-law raised it with you did you know yeah absolutely i did i was aware i just didn't care 
And then she was like, it's a long time. And I was like, oh, maybe I should mention it. Because I, I, I don't know. It's like, I think it's... This sounds so dumb, even in my own head. But it's almost like it's psychological. Like, finding out that I've got a reason to be distracted or got a reason to fucking, like... It's almost like it's making it worse. But that doesn't make any sense, which I understand. Um, I mean, I... I don't go past the point of if I think I smell, obviously. It's usually one and then maybe two days and then I'll have another one or whatever. And usually it's not too bad, but I guess it is in the last month. It's just not every other day. And, okay. yeah, I don't know. I'm asking you, should I be worried? Or more to the point, I guess, why is it that when... Okay, here's an idea. I spoke to um, GP doctor, yeah? Yeah. And... Um, I was in a crisis day, I think everything with the family just happened and something with yeah. my friend, whatever, and I said to her, I mentioned to her on the phone too, needing to shower, I hadn't had a shower in a couple of days, and she's like, that's the first step for basic self-care, and I was on yes. the phone to her, she happened to ring me, like I'd totally forgotten about the appointment, literally while I was crying my eyes out, so she helped yeah. me calm the fuck down, um, and she's like, you know, get in the shower once you're off the phone. I was like, yes, 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 absolutely. I was still two days after that before I did. Okay. Tell me about when you do shower. Is what, What's it like? I love it. I love being in the shower. Once I'm in the shower, I never want to get out of the shower. So okay. I can't un I can't make it make sense to myself. Really? You can How are me. you at doing things good, well, that are positive for yourself? How are you at accepting positive experiences, particularly when you're emotionally dysregulated? I'm really, really fucking shitty, shocking at it. Oh, this is why I love you. This is why you're good at your no, job. here's the thing. When you're filled with negative experiences, mm -hmm. experiencing positive experiences is overwhelming and difficult. So yes. in true you format, you avoid them. Uh, this is why I'm recording everything these days, because I will watch this back and be like, yes, so true. Because I There's fucking love yes, showers. The more pleasant experiences that you have, the less time and space and energy and brain chemistry we have for the negative ones. So yeah. ironically, by doing more positive things, we have less negative things. Well, less I, I, I know less this. Less, all these things. Yeah. But so I, even in the dark days, we have to accept that there can be some positive. And here's the thing. You have the I'm not worthy stuff. You have the I'm not good enough thing. And all these beliefs get in the way. And then you don't let yourself have the positive experiences. You love a shower. Yeah. You love the smells and the good things and the things. I've got a fully waterproof vibrator. I keep in there, obviously. I mean, <laughs> does that surprise That's you? Not the function of a shower, but hey, possibly it makes a positive them even secondary more. Game. But anyway, the point is, I do love a shower. The point is, the yeah. shower is a good space for you. And when you're feeling not very worthy, you don't let yourself have the good stuff. Oh, that makes so much sense because I hadn't been able to make it make sense in my head because I was just like, because obviously I feel like this darkness has been coming up. Like I said, I did cut, but I feel like that happened to make it yeah. stop happening because I really feel like something switched in my brain. Eh? That's just yeah. like, nope, it's and gone. And then you had the experience with the ice pipe and yeah. that was a positive one. So, you know, maybe we're on the up and up. That's that was, what like, I feel like. Days. Yeah. It, it is honestly... As Elaine says, like, unless there's something negative about showers, it's about accepting that there is okay to have some good things and that it's okay to do things for yourself and that it's actually worthy and important and you're important. Oh, my God. The time I've just, energy into you is necessary. I've just figured it out. You are on the money because it's just hit me. I've been cutting and it aligns in with what you just said because every time I feel feel or perceive like I've done something to make somebody else her angry upset whatever it is right even though I'm not taking full responsibility of this I know that I play my part yes. I then hurt myself in whatever yes. way it is to make okay. up for the hurt that I've given someone else so and at a whether... minimum you take away the positives at the maximum you sabotage the good things in your life and you intentionally do really problematic coping strategies like cutting yeah so 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 in that sense cutting and not sharing are like very similar but just different okay. levels aren't they yes. i've yes. never thought of it like that because i'm very aware that when i cut it is it is to make me feel better for hurting somebody else well even though i might not you feel better in that to make to punish you 
Yeah, yeah, to make, yeah, yeah, as in I feel yeah. better because I deserve to be hurt. I deserve the punishment. Yeah, 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 but absolutely. If it's about I deserve punishment, then not showering is I might not deserve punishment, but I don't deserve good things. Yeah. Oh, so it's not you are so smart. Punishing, it's just refusing of a reward. It's like when the dog does something yeah. good and, you know, you don't give them the treat. Yeah, okay, that makes sense because I haven't been able to make it make sense, but so much thank you has just fallen into place because generally speaking i feel good i do like i feel like things are all coming together you know what i mean like well ironically in dbt you know what the the use of skills is called as we learn these things as we get better at emotional regulation all that stuff it's called the path to freedom the path to freedom love it <laughs> well, that's what i'm aiming for i'll write that to freedom yes Beta. and um you know we want to have a, a life that's worth living and all lives are worth living even when they're sometimes filled with darkness and negativity for at least parts of it absolutely can carve good things out of really dark situations oh i agree that's why i'm constantly saying people that take in drugs wars, still yeah. people exactly in wars there's still love stories oh absolutely they make movies about them I'm a true romantic at heart. I know. I um, fully believe in a true unconditional love. You know that of all people. Yeah. Um, so that's the thing. You know, we have to accept that you are worthy of the good stuff as well. Yeah. I just have to and remember to remind the myself. The punishment part is, is that it's, it's kind of like the calibration is like over here. Yeah. And calibration to be like here. Well, I think that sort of got like in yesterday's appointment that really rung true too because she was like you were literally born with chemical imbalances she goes straight away that changes shit she goes it makes your life harder immediately yep. she's like and now you've got this amount of because I just printed off whatever it was ahead of everything and she's going through the list ticking them going all of these are so like it's just there's so much bullshit going on and I was like ah oh. so I'm like Half the bullshit that I'm dealing with is medical, like medication related. And I was like, so I'm taking the big takeaway as I need to be kinder to myself. Because this whole, I can give the advice to others. When I feel good, I feel great. When I feel bad, oh, well, as we've said, I dysregulate to the point of, yeah, shit. But, you know, I feel like this week. You don't dysregulate to the point of shit. You dysregulate and you just haven't quite mastered the skills to get through that yet. I was reading You're some... still not shit when you dysregulate, FYI. Yeah, yeah, okay, yes, I need to, yeah. Okay, thank you. I, yes. Um, last night I thought it would be interesting to Google the differences between borderline personality disorder and psychopath, right? And then I went down a crazy rabbit hole of reading stuff. And then I read something about um, the value, devalue in BPD people, right? And and I'm, I was thinking about a, a situation that happened with a uni friend, whereas... I've ended a friendship based on something that just disturbed me so bad. Um, and then when I read this last night, I'm like, what I'm reading makes sense to me. And I'm like, I don't understand how it wouldn't make sense to the next person. And then I'm like, but I'm reading about someone with BPD and I've got BPD. So I'm guessing that's why it makes sense to me. Whereas I'm finding it confusing because like this friend I've ended a friendship with, I fucking loved our friendship. Absolutely I did. But when he can say something to me on a video call and just have little, like literally no feeling about the next person, about something again when it involves children, that is just so much bigger than him. I can't deal with people like that. I'm, I'm at the point where I'd just really rather have me and the dog and nobody than dealing with people that make me angry when I don't know how to keep my anger in check or I'm not at that calm place yet. Yeah, I think the difficulty is is don't use examples of valuing and devaluing when it's something as big as safety of children. Because So I'm okay then. Because yeah, when it I comes to kids, I, I very it, fucking... That's a very different thing. So, for example, let's talk about... I'll give you a different example. Okay, yeah. you're driving along the highway and then you go past an on-ramp, but then you blow a tire. You used this one last week. Yeah. So you, you're in that situation. You've checked the facts, right? Yes. We know that the kid okay. needed to go to hospital, whatever it was. person yes, didn't yes. see it. Yep, so this yep. is the same situation. You yep. have to check the facts. Yep. So in this instance, what's happening is you have your friend from wherever your friend was from. I forget now. And they um, 
they're talking to you about these things and you say, hang on, the actual fact is that there's a child in danger here. So it's yeah. sort of like you're the driver of the car. Well, yeah, I mean, in this sense, the child wasn't in danger in immediate senses, but the way this person was talking and going about their business, they could have put that child into that situation. Don't put any child into, like, don't put yourself into a situation that but, on yeah. any level could fuck up a kid's life. And then you're complicit in abuse or trauma or I whatever. can't have someone in my life who's doing wrong to a child because I literally feel like I'm exactly. a part of it. So, because I well, am. I can't be a part of you're that. You're not a part of it, but what you are doing is trying to stand up for the really important values that you have, which is the next bit, is once we know what's important, once we do have the facts, are they in line with what really matters with my life and what? where's my stance on it? Yeah, like because... How do I address the situation well, in what, line with the values? What happened yeah. with my friend? I got angry. I had to end the conversation. I couldn't talk. I was fuming angry right i was just like who the fuck how can you not see this so i said to him i'm ending the conversation i can't talk i can't think i'm walking the fuck away this is it let me think yeah so he went away and did whatever he did came back the next day huge messaging and i went through it all did the whole thing and i was like look dude it's been the next day i've gone through it i'm obviously calm this that and everything else i said but i still stand by what i've said exactly effectively so meaning i can't continue this friendship the initial reaction being the anger and stuff doesn't effectively manage the situation. That's so the part I'm trying to get past. <laughs> the problem solving of the options. If, if it's the right emotion to fit the situation, then we problem solve how to best engage the emotion to get your point across. Yeah. Using all the good communication skills. So what you did in this instance with this friend, you took a step back, reflected about what you were going to say, figured out what the actual issue was, and tried to communicate it effectively. Yes. Now, the valuing and devaluing bit is where you cut off the friendship because of this issue. And here's the thing sometimes, and this is like, are you going to are you gonna not have friends who, for example, don't put the washing on the Oh, line dude, oh, if I didn't have people. friends that agree with everything, I'd have none because they all eat meat. So no one gives a crap about those things because they're not mm. what we call the make it or break it issues. Yeah. But when you're talking about child safety in this and in your relationship with your sister-in-law, these are things that you can say, I categorically can't sit with that. Thank you. That's categorically I'm cannot with sit that. with that. And, can't, people. you know, with kids, it's, you know, I, I can't say that. I don't I want children for a reason, but I fucking love them. I think they're the most yeah. purest beings on the planet. And it's there's the too many people happy to fuck them up. Every grown up in this world mm. to support the well-being and safety of children so you understand legally, why i can't have this people. and morally legally yeah. thank you i needed to hear legally. that because legally i think someone has to do something and whilst i think that you know sometimes people are complicit and there is an element of of they they want to bring in their beliefs of i can't it's too hard i wouldn't it would disrupt relationships it would create problems someone would get into trouble blah 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 and if we check the facts child in danger trumps it all it trumps it all yes thank you thank you so, thank you thank you i feel so fucking validated i can't even begin to tell so you for example with this with the example we used last time we're talking about it this time again you're driving the car and there's a kid having an asthma attack or whatever it was i can't remember i said in the back seat of the car you will drive past absolutely everything else Bloody oath you would. Yes. for and valid reasons and Thank everybody you. else in the world needs to check their facts about what's important in that instance yeah, what's because important in that instance is child safety. Yeah, because people keep telling me there's different levels of wrong and right, and yes, I understand that, but there's no different level of wrong and right when it comes to a fucking child safety, as far as I'm concerned. Do the right thing. It's so fucking simple. And it's not for us to decide. You know, people often will struggle with they don't want to have, like, I don't know the whole story, mm. or I don't want anyone to get in trouble. That's why the or, world's so fucked. Or, I don't know that, or you know, insert excuse here. It's not for us to decide mm -hmm. the guilt or innocence of the situation. It's our it's our responsibility to flag concern, to implement safety for a child if it's warranted. This child, this this happens. situation that I'm aware of, I'd put money on it, nothing's being done about it, and I'd also put money on it if something's not done about it. You're like fucking so fast. I'm absolutely devastated. I don't know who these people are, so I can't make the phone call. I'd make it right fucking now if I could. Well, I'm that genuinely concerned about these children. Sure. Yeah. And I'm so grateful to have like, because I keep thinking... And then thinking, we have oh. to accept that the world... And sometimes people will do the wrong thing. And 
if you explain to someone that these are the consequences of their, like some people, it's naivety, they don't understand, they don't know, whatever. And you have this conversation, you have it effectively, you do it in a regulated, clear way, and they still make poor decisions that aren't in line with your values with regards to child safety or, you know, various other things. Then you have a decision to make about your relationship with that person. Yes, that's what I've done. done because but we don't do it in a reactive way. We do it in a decisive, active way, reflecting on what matters, reflecting on our values, and then we do it. We don't. So, so that, I, I feel like I can't. Like in the in the end, I got there. Obviously, I still deal with the original fuck. I can't handle the intense emotions, which is why I've had to shut the phone calls down immediately in, in, in crisis survival skills sometimes the first thing we need to do is take the step back and, and look at what's happening That's the what, first thing we do is take the step back so i feel like i've done that because in both situations yes i've reacted but i've gone you know what i know i'm reacting i need to walk away right. i will come back and every single which way i look at it yes these two people i would fucking love them to be in my life but I can not have people in my life that do this. I can't. Like, it connects to me, and I'm... Yeah. It literally makes me feel sick. Yeah. So, I and you feel have to so also much better. And your world in a, in, a, in a way of self-preservation and self-support as well. And if having a situation where, you know, you don't feel like you are safe by association with those people... Mm. Oh, yeah, like, this is bad, what I've been told, and it's, it's and you shitty. you not necessarily do, and that's okay. You know, don't put yourself in a situation where you're going to continuously be, quote, triggered. I will have been, yeah. Because of, of, of that. You don't have to have people in your life. You choose to have people in your life. Absolutely. And the people who you choose to have in your life need to just need to have the right values for you to match that. It has to be a exactly. fit. Exactly. And, and I'm fully at the point, like I've said, where it's like my values, my morals, my ethics, they trump everything. I spent 24 hours trying to figure out if I wanted to buy eggs. In the end, I didn't buy any, but you know, that's where I'm at. So I know we're out of time. But, um, but what happens though is also, yes, but it's also some people will, in, and this is about the intention part, you know, valuing and devaluing and stuff. People will unintentionally, minimally, so the CPS issue, one thing, yeah, different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something more minor. People will unintentionally let you down. No shit. And it, them, I know that. Don't don't black and white those. People. I haven't don't been, and and that's, that's why situation. I was originally gonna be like, okay, I know my sister in law has the ability to lie. We've all got the ability to lie, fair really? cool, but like she's she's more susceptible to it, I feel, because she needs the family support. She's not like me. We're very different in that sense. It's just the fact that she was so able to lie about me that I couldn't deal. But to begin with, I was willing to look past it, my point being, you know what I mean? But there's only so much I can look past and yeah. that's it. There, yeah. there are some situations which you're not, you just can't compromise. And these are them. This is the one. Yeah, cool. You know, there's not very many things in your life you get to say absolutely not. Um, there's very few times in your life when things are are worth worth ending relationships and ending things for, and we have to be very careful about what they are. Yeah, child safety is absolutely probably one of them. Yeah, well, it's and right up there for me. Yeah. If it's not, then that doesn't fit your values because that's who you are. Yeah, like like I've said. I, uh... Doing the right thing is, is so important, but you know, yeah, I don't know. Can you tell, I don't think I have any more appointments with you. I'm looking at the clock going, I can't remember what time we started, but I don't think you were late today. I don't know because I can't, I was not late today. <laughs> you weren't right. late, I know. Good oh, on you. Um, I can't tell because you're on video call, so I can't oh, tell. If I do that, then it hangs up on you. So I'll have my assistant call you and she'll. Oh yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I just, because you, you did say that it's still the 20 this year, is it? Or, yeah, 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 because I'm hoping if that's the case, if she can call me, then I'm yeah, going to book in like every fortnight if, moving forward. I'm at a conference um, for a week and then it's Labor Day, so it probably so I'm off for two weeks, so they're probably going to be about a month. Yeah. Because my appointments are. Yeah, 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 but, cool. How's um, group therapy going? I'm excited about when that yeah, starts. We did week four this week, so week four is the, like not the most fun week, but that's okay. Um, so next week, distress tolerance back, and then... I'm excited um, about doing group therapy when it's my turn. Our art lady is away at the moment, so I have to find out when she can come in because she was meant to do week five, but I'm not sure. So we'll, we'll just wait until she's available. Fair you enough. Know, in the days of COVID. 
Yes, I know, but you know, yeah. Okay, so if you can get her to call me, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Um, and can you please send me that book? I don't care if it's like six hundred pages. Just it's not. It's like three hundred and fifty. Oh, so it's like some of my it's philosophy not a book. stuff. It's just handouts. Oh yeah, but it's just the way you send it to me is all weird. So I no, just no why because it yeah I don't know why. All Forget good. It. Thank you so much. You have totally no, validated me, dude. Technology. Look at what I bought because of this. Yeah. Hours of patience is what oh, I was told. Works. Yes, that's what I want. <laughs> Send it to me and I will make my own one. Okay, awesome. I am so grateful. I See have... you soon. Bye.